Okay, welcome to the Alibaba Cloud for Developer Forum at the Alibaba Cloud Summit Live 2021. Next, we will have a panel discussion about the challenges and opportunities for developers in the post-pandemic world. Today, I'm fortunate to be joined by Boy Suganda, Pablo Puig, and Leon Rodenberg, some pioneers in the industries who are going to be giving us some insights into our new world of technology post the pandemic. So let's start by going around the table. Um, please introduce yourself, uh, maybe where you're working, maybe a current project you're on, something like this. Uh, Leon, let's start with you. Yeah, okay. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Leon Rodenburg. I'm a software development consultant at Xibia in the Netherlands. And I've been an Alibaba Cloud MVP for over two years now. Um, so I have quite some experience in working with cloud. Uh, but my background is in software development, so I uh, come from uh, yeah, programming, actually, and made a jump into cloud uh, a few years back. And since then, I've been helping a lot of customers to uh, develop and deploy cloud-native software. Uh, and I've also been training others to do so. And my experience with Alibaba Cloud is mostly around helping companies in the EU uh, get into the Chinese market with their software by utilizing yeah, the power of Alibaba Cloud. So that's, that's where I use Alibaba Cloud the most. Uh, in these past few years. Great, Great, thank you. Pablo? Yeah, I will continue. Yeah, my name is Pablo. Uh, I'm originally from Spain, but living in Germany already since 10 years. I'm basically using Alibaba Cloud on a daily basis, uh, helping customers uh, to deploy their solutions in the Alibaba Cloud platform. Um, yeah, currently uh, working as the CEO of Ropu Cloud. Basically, we are a cloud uh, consulting and training uh, company that uh, are partnering with Alibaba Cloud. So we are delivering trainings, we are implementing solutions, doing migrations, and everything in Alibaba Cloud. So that's basically uh, what I wanted to highlight about myself. I think it's me <laughs> for the next. Yeah, uh, I'm Boy Sugane Sinaga. I work at Dana as Site Reliability Engineer. We provide 24-7 high availability system, and we use several technologies like uh, ECS, uh, RDS, and many more. In my another uh, experience, uh, I, I love competition, and we joined uh, Alibaba Cloud Global Innovation Challenge in 2020, and we nailed it. We won the first prize. Um, besides Alibaba Cloud, uh, I I learned and had time to touch uh, several uh, cloud providers. Uh, maybe uh, if I want to mix them up, so that uh, I need to understand them a lot. I think that's enough for me. <laughs> Great, thank you guys for the introduction. So let's jump into it. We're still in the pandemic world today. Um, as I understand, Leon and Pablo are in Amsterdam and Spain, respectively. So that would be the European region. Um, and, and boy, you're in Indonesia, correct? Um, I'm just kind of curious, what are the biggest changes that you've seen in the software industry in these, in these last two years? Uh, specifically to your region. Yeah, yeah I want to oh, Please, Pablo. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Leon. Yeah, basically what, what I have seen in my region is that the pandemic has accelerated the cloud adoption. So basically I have seen uh, an increase on uh, enterprises moving to the cloud, um, basically um, adopting Alibaba Cloud as the new uh, cloud provider. Um, in my opinion, the reasons for that vary a lot. So basically uh, creating new solutions to adapt the current times and current needs, and they need for that a uh, new uh, solution for that. Uh, they want also to innovate in new solutions or uh, implementations, or even just solutions for employees working at remote that they need a virtual desktop or such kind of stuff. And also a lot of uh, IT cost saving due to the one of the biggest advantages that the cloud offers with on demand uh, that the, the enterprises can save a lot of money. I think those are, in my opinion, the keys uh, in order to um, 
That, and that's why uh, the cloud adoption has been accelerated during the during these times. What do you think? Yeah, I think, uh, well, because I'm also in the EU, I think my experience will uh, sort of be similar. But I think uh, for us, the biggest change would be uh, that, that we're working from home. So that we're actually having this panel discussion uh, virtually instead of uh, physically. Uh, that will be the biggest change. And that seems like sort of a small change, but I think it catalyzes all kinds of speed up reactions that need to happen. And I think the software development and the software industry has been one of the better industries to actually take the opportunity and still be able to deliver value and still be able to keep on running. So there have been uh, lots of issues with companies needing to shut down or, or shops needing to close. And for them, it's not possible to go online and work from home and use, use yeah, software to make their product. But in the software industry, you actually use software to make software. And because we have cloud and we have all these services that we can just take and have running within minutes or seconds, um, it was relatively easy, I would say, for the software industry to go online and make everything happen there uh, compared to other industries. So that's where I think um, the biggest change happened, happened but also um, maybe after a few weeks or months, everyone sort of also picked up their speed again and started delivering products, starting delivering their software again. And that was all due to the fact that we were able to get something out of the cloud quickly and, and yeah, just after we were dragged down sort, sort of by the pandemic to, to start running again. So that was really cool to see. Yeah, uh, I agree with you, with you guys. Uh, uh, everyone got impact from this pandemic, uh, but the difference is only about how big the difference is. And uh, in Indonesia itself, um, the, the industry categorized by uh, uh, travel, flight and hotel, uh, they are the most impacted use, uh, industry, I mean. Um, Dana itself, my, my office, uh, in the beginning of this pandemic, uh, got, got the reduction too. But uh, after a few, few months uh, later, uh, it, it uh, recovered. Um, I think <laughs> for uh, additional, we we were uh, using a uh, mask and um, keep our distance and uh, uh, reduce our uh, outdoor activity uh, um, and the rest I think already answered by both of you. <laughs> cool, cool. So yeah, now we're in a we're in a place now where there's vaccines being created, uh, borders are opening, um, and it seems like we might be climbing out of it a little bit. Um, we're maybe through the darkest times of the pandemic, um, and now we start to see businesses and industries uh, reopening um, and redeveloping. And now that they've had this time off, um, they've had a lot of time to sort of reposition themselves. So, you know, how do these industries reposition themselves with cloud computing? Um, and, and, and how do they spend this time, you know, now being able to develop into a post-pandemic world that uh, sort of embraces this cloud computing development, which has been so much during the COVID times. Yeah, I think uh, that for for, for most companies, um, it, it, it became a must to actually do stuff online. And I think yeah. we can see that um, from, for example, yeah, you said vaccines, we can, we, we finally have vaccines so that we can uh, get past the pandemic. But here in the Netherlands to actually get your vaccine, you need to book an appointment. And that appointment is booked online. So they need some place to run that application. So that drove innovation to actually make stuff like uh, doctor's appointments, uh, shopping, click and collect, like every, for, for uh, whenever you buy something online, but go to collect it uh, physically. Uh, yeah, innovations like that, it sort of, the, the pandemic drove those innovations. So before the pandemic, some things were happening, of course, uh, but yeah, it was, it was like step by step. But because the pandemic came around, uh, companies were forced to look into this and forced to actually use it. I think that is going to be a big driver for them to actually recover more quickly. And probably they will keep on doing what they have adapted in uh, during the pandemic. Uh, those adaptations are going to stay. And then we're going to keep on doing more and more online and getting more and more um, yeah, platforms or services to actually yeah, do stuff online combined with the physical world. So I think click and collect where you buy your goods online but you actually go to the shop to collect them mm -hmm. so they don't have to be delivered. 
Uh, I think that is one example that has been pretty widespread here. Um, and I think it's going to stay uh, and, and be more of like an option that people choose more often because you can order at your convenience and then also go to the shop uh, when it's convenient for you. So I think that's one of the examples that, that will actually stay. And that runs on cloud because it's if you have a lot of orders, you need to have uh, a lot of machines to handle those orders, uh, which means that you need to make sure that your, your infrastructure can scale. And that's where the cloud really plays a big role. I totally agree with you, Leon. I mean that um, the pandemic has accelerated totally the cloud adoption, but also the all the online technological stuff. And uh, yeah, basically what I see is that the cloud has come to stay. So basically that um, all what we are using right now, all the technologies that we are using right now, this will be the, the, the future, but also the present. So basically, um, we will continue using these kind of technologies. The demand will also increase. The organizations are going to uh, adopt it in a better or in a higher way uh, because the cloud is offering a lot of advantages over the um, traditional stuff, basically um, the scalability, the elasticity, uh, cost optimization. I mean, there, there are a lot of advantages that this will bring to the, to the wall, to the software wall. So I, I, I am pretty sure that they will stay after the pandemic and, the, um, and people who before was not um, used to, to use these kind of technologies, kind of uh, applications or websites or whatever, uh, they, will, they will start using them because there is no other way. I, now the, it's very difficult right now that the, all these kind of um, technologies that are so commonly used that are basically after the pandemic not used anymore. I, I, that's impossible. So I don't think that. Yeah, um, we have to thanks to uh, to say thanks to uh, vaccine because uh, our worry less. Um, and then uh, for uh, your your board uh, arguments, I have no doubt about that. <laughs> and um, in Indonesia itself, uh, we. As example, uh, we we change from the physical money by uh, move to uh, as example digital wallet, so that uh, our contact physical contact uh, then uh, reduce, and then uh, I think this that's uh, about the solution and how we think creatively. I think. <laughs> yeah, I think the the money one is also one that that that, that we saw. So I think. Previously, people were using their, their, their cards a lot to pay. Uh, we don't have, really have an online wallet that we're using. Uh, but I think everyone now moved to, to digital payment. So you just use your phone to pay uh, and that's it. And I, I, I don't remember having any cash money in my wallet since, well, during the whole pandemic, but even before that. So I think that, that also, that is a big change. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's a good example. Yeah, there's no doubt that development in the cloud industry has been, you know, exponential in the last few years as far as what services are available to users and what developers are able to do. Um, from the developer's standpoint, especially for the ones that are just entering the industry, it might be difficult to decide what skill to work on the most, especially when you see so much automation happening. Um, you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, perfect a skill that is going to be automated um, in a few years. Um, so sort of an, a per, on a personal advice level, what, what skills would you recommend to developers who are just entering the industry? Yeah, I can start maybe. Um, in my opinion, it is very difficult to recommend just one area or one skill mm -hmm. to learn. Uh, I will say that uh, there are currently a lot of hot areas or a lot of topics that are, uh, are a lot of skills that are required in the cloud industry. Uh, I can mention, for example, big data or machine learning, I don't know, serverless, IoT. There are a lot of them and it's kind of difficult to recommend one. Uh, what I would recommend or what my advice would be is uh, do whatever you like most, but become very good on what you do. So basically that uh, you focus on one topic uh, and uh, you become very good on that. 
Uh, that's the best advice I can give, I would say. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree there. Uh, because if you look at all the like components that are in, 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 in cloud, like you mentioned, AI, machine learning, uh, um, it, it is really unrealistic to expect someone to know everything about the internals of Kubernetes and also know how to train a neural network to actually uh, uh, identify uh, uh, something in pictures, uh, do object recognition, for example. You cannot be an expert in both. It's almost impossible. There are people, of course, that can do it. But in general, I would say you have to choose between which one of these you like the most. So if you're really into big data, then go all, all like put everything on big data and just study everything you can about the services that are available to you for solving the problems that you have in big data. Um, if you're more into software development, then I would say you can study uh, uh, container services, uh, make sure that you know how to run production uh, applications in production, uh, make sure how to automate things. So uh, you don't have to be afraid that you'll be automated because you are the person automating the things. Uh, so if you know how to do CI CD, and deploy applications automatically, then nobody can actually automate you away because then we would automate the automation. Uh, and then I, I'm, I don't see that happening in the, in the coming years. So um, yeah, it, it really depends on what you like. So do what you like. Uh, so I fully agree with Pablo. Um, and don't focus too much on the hot topics. So one hot topic in software development is Kubernetes. Everyone is running their applications on Kubernetes. Um, it's maybe even pa past hot. But still, it's a valuable skill, and there's lots of demand in the market. But it's hard to foresee if that demand is going to stay, or if people are going to move to the next best service for running containers as soon as it is invented. Uh, but we just don't know that yet. So I would say learn about the concepts and learn how to use it. But don't invest all your time on a single technology or single like trend or hype, because if you don't understand the concepts behind it, then when the next service comes out, you have to start all over again. Uh, so I would say that trying to focus on the on the on the concepts more than the actual implementation is uh, really valuable because that will help you in the future when new services come out. Uh, you actually al already know the concept, so you just apply those concepts to that new service, and you, you can you can start using it immediately. So yeah. that that would be my uh, suggestion. Uh, I I agree for both you, uh, and I just uh, want to add that. Uh, in Indonesia, we we uh, we uh, believe that uh, most of us, I, I mean, uh, Indonesia is not lacking of uh, smart people, but Indonesia is lacking of good people, good attitude. Um, I think after you feel that you're you're okay with your uh, attitude right now, uh, I think for um, Data science and automation uh, are the hot hot uh, topic to to be learned. I think. Nice. So yeah, all three of you seem to agree that intense study in a specific field um, and honing a skill will sort of um, make you stand out in the marketplace. Um, and I think we could say that about many industries. So then the question becomes: How do you hone that skill? Um, I'm sure you guys have all had different methods, um, and I'm sure it is a balance between um, studying and then practical use and falling on your face and coming back up and trying it again. Um, what has been the most useful educational tools that you guys have um, come across when diving into a subject that you're interested in and want to get better in? Mm, maybe it starts from me. Um, I think it will be short. <laughs> uh, the answer is curiosity. Curiosity and um, how you start your first step. After your first step uh, and you continue your uh, feeling about uh, curiosity, it will be uh, the next step and uh, you will you'll step into the next step again and continue in loop. And it in the uh, and of this uh, this loop, you you'll enjoy and you'll understand and you will find the answer is. I think that's from me. You you said a career city. Yeah. What, what is that? Uh, curiosity. Mm. 
Oh, curiosity. Oh, I got you. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I love it. <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So going step by step then. Uh, and then yeah. iterate. So start small and get bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I can second to that. Uh, I think sure. one of the things that I, especially at the beginning, use the most is just follow a training, which is a bit harder to do now because it's virtual, but also easier to do because you can follow follow training all around the world. Uh, yeah. But if you just, um, because I, I'm also doing projects like daily. So uh, that's my full-time job, which means that if I need to focus on learning something new, I need to either find the time to do it or do it in my own time, uh, which I often do. But yeah, some, some people uh, might, might not want to do that. So if you can follow a training, then you can actually have two days or maybe even three days full focus on a new like topic or new area that you want to study. And then by not having like the, the stuff that bothers you daily, like your project or your daily work, you can focus for three days. And in those three days, you can actually learn a lot and thereby get the basis that will help you iterate uh, and, and get yeah, bigger and bigger. And, and the combination of theory and practice is also the, is always the best. It's like learning to drive a car. You can't only learn to drive a car and then go on the road because you have no clue what the signs mean. But you can also not just learn the theory and then never driven a car and then go on the road because you'll bump into everything. So the combination is really the best to have. Uh, and that's often what's what often in training. Yeah. So when you say training, you said two or three day training. That makes me think of sort of an offline classroom setting training. Yeah. Is that what you mean? I think those are most effective. Self-learning courses mm -hmm. are, of course, also effective, mm -hmm. but it depends on your own ambition and your own motivation. So if you really just glance through the content, you haven't grasped it. So uh, I think with an offline training, you're sort of forced to focus and forced to really grasp something before moving on to the next. So with, with online on-demand training, uh, I see that people sometimes run the risk of just not studying the right parts or studying some parts too in-depth and thereby missing other important concepts. Um, so I, I, yeah, at the start, I would say official classroom training is probably the best way to go. After that, once you know how to study and what parts are important and what parts are not, then I would say you can add on-demand courses or videos or, or, or self-learning self material. I, I agree on you guys, but what it works most at, uh, for me uh, is basically learning by doing. Uh, I have tried a lot of courses, a lot of trainings. They are very great, but in order to understand it, I mean, very, very deep, I need to practice it. So, and that's one, one of the key advantages of the cloud is that you can almost test everything in a, I mean, very easy and fast way. Uh, you can just get your uh, ECS instance uh, up and running in, in five minutes uh, with all the configurations there and uh, start testing your code, for example. Uh, and, and the good thing for that is that Alibaba Cloud is offering kind of a free tier and uh, free services. So it is very easy to, to start playing and testing around and getting your hands dirty so that at the end, it's kind of very easy to test or to use the different services that you are kind of learning the theory, but you need also the practice part. And in my opinion, that's the part where I learn at most. Yeah. And for some people, I think just kind of testing and failing and, and falling on your face over and over is very discouraging. And, and I think in, in light of that, we've seen a lot more lab environments being set up by educational institutes so that you really feel like you are doing, uh, you know, going through a process, but then there's little hints and things along the way that get you going too. Um, and it's a little bit more interactive. So yeah, totally. cool. I, I also yeah. have a lot of fun doing that, and uh, mm -hmm. you also enjoy. It's not just listening; it's also doing. I mean, yeah, you're clicking the buttons. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, kind of. yeah, yeah. I do think that there, there are all there are all kinds of providers for these lab environments, but I do mm -hmm. think that sometimes the quality uh, mm -hmm. is also important to to keep in mind because some some labs they just allow you to copy paste uh, or already give you the answer to the question. And for me, learning is all about the challenge. So if I don't have the challenge, then I won't learn. I'll just do whatever it says it does, I need to do, and then it's done. Right. Then when I think right. back about what I've done, I don't remember because, yeah, I just read it and then did it. So it's really good, I think, if there's, if, if there's a challenge in every 
every aspect of what you're doing. So either you create a challenge yourself, like Pablo does, he just sets up an account, starts building stuff, which means you have a mm -hmm. really big challenge. And the lab mm -hmm. environment really can chunk that, that challenge up into smaller pieces and guide you through yeah. the challenge. And mm -hmm. like give you one specific task and then maybe give you a hint to the documentation where, where you can find the solution or maybe find a way of solving it because there's, there are often multiple ways. Um, and then you can figure it out yourself. And once you've done that, you, you'll not forget. You'll, you'll just you'll remember that solution. And then the next time you see the same problem, then you know what to apply immediately. So yeah, I, I, the lab environments are, are, are really helpful, uh, I think, because yeah, just all about the challenge. Nice, yeah. And uh, so, so you guys have a ton of certificates that are, are posted online and, and developers around the world are, you know, getting certificates as well. Um, some people ask, you know, what is the value of a certification? If I can do the task and prove that I can do the task, you know, why do I need a company to say that, you know, I'm proficient in this? Um, what does a certification prove to an employer? I know some of you are employers yourself. Uh, when you look at employees, if they have certifications, you probably look at them in a different light. Um, so, yeah, sort of first question is, is, what is the value of a certification? Um, and then how, how do you prepare for those certifications? Yeah, I can start with this. Um, I will say that for me, cloud certifications are basically a challenge. As Leon was saying before, if I have that challenge, if I have that goal, I'm kind of forced to uh, start learning, start doing, and uh, getting my, my, yeah, just uh, getting those uh, skills and uh, knowledge. Um, so what, what it shows to me, people who have or who own some cloud certifications is basically interest interest on learning that topic, interest on knowing about that uh, provider or interest about um, yeah, getting basically that skill. Uh, it doesn't mean directly that the, the, the person behind that uh, certification has all the skills that are required on that. Uh, it means that he has the interest um, because at the end, uh, the experience is also very important. You can get the cloud certifications, but without having any um, real project experience. Uh, anyhow, um, if you have that cloud certification, my opinion is very important to, to, to see that, that, that interest, that um, the first step, so to say, he is done and now he's uh, able to start doing the, the practice on or, or the let's say the project experience. Uh, in addition to that, how I prepare myself uh, for, a, um, for a certification, basically the, some of the steps that uh, Leon described before, I, my, my preferred uh, solution or my preferred way is with uh, instructor-led training. So basically I, I have an instructor who knows the content, who knows the certification and that um, he basically explains everything uh, in a, a full focus session, so to say, so I don't have uh, any other stuff to do. I'm basically focused on, on that. And uh, again, uh, my, my, my hands-on uh, labs are for me very, very important. So basically I'm combining, uh, playing around, the, um, around the, the console or with the CLI or whatever, and um, studying with a uh, preferable with uh, uh, instructor-led training. Who's next? <laughs> Maybe uh, I'll, I'll let this. Uh, <laughs> okay, um, for me, the, uh, uh, the things that Pablo said is the, the things that I do uh, to prepare my my uh, exam, uh, I learn and try to practice how how uh, to do something. Let's say, ex example, when you try to uh, do auto scaling, and then uh, what the things that you need to uh, uh, to make uh, to pre to prepare. I mean, um, the first one I think uh, you you go to the uh, to the feature, auto scaling, and then you uh, 
create a scaling group and then you uh, config your scaling configuration and then enable your scaling uh, group and then you you make the scaling task and then uh, you make alarm schedule task and etc and yeah i think learning learning by doing is uh, the answer for uh, make your uh, memory stronger and then um, yeah that's it as uh, in addition um, when when you want want to start your uh, exam uh, in the in the night please don't uh, stay up late because it will make you sick <laughs> in uh, in the in the exam <laughs> I That's think good advice. Get some sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and how, uh, boy, how are the how are the companies looking at certificates in Indonesia? Like, are they really important, or or do do companies really value certificates? Yeah, uh, in Indonesia itself, uh, we we value the certification, and uh, it proves you that you uh, understand about the technology, and yeah, it it proves uh, the the skill of. Uh, employee as example yeah 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 because i'm curious because i think the the value of a certificate is really regional uh because in some markets it's really important to be certified and in others it might not be too important mm -hmm. yeah. uh, i think for us for example i think looking at certificates is like having a certificate is good because it proves that you have a sort of a baseline knowledge but it doesn't prove that you have experience and it doesn't necessarily prove that you have the skill, just like Pablo said. Um, so I think studying for certificates is also a good way to actually just learn the, uh, the services and learn uh, about the concepts. But you do need to add skill to that and experience because without it, yeah, it's just a certificate. But then when, when the company that you're trying to uh, uh, work at or, or a new uh, client is, is contacting you for a project, they say, ah, nice, you have this certificate. And then you start at the project, but then you don't have any real world experience on how to deploy something uh, with 40 plus microservices, et cetera. Uh, yeah, that just doesn't add up. So I would say you've, it's best to first do hands-on stuff, get experience, and then add the certificate on top of that or do it the other way around, but as sort of a cake. So you have both of them. Um, yeah. And that, that is the real value uh, because just grinding certificates isn't adding a lot of value it might add value to your resume or show that you have this the knowledge but please also make sure that you have the, the the experience like really do it and only going through the certificates one by one and then having them all is really cool but uh skills are are what what really sets you apart from the others um and and for studying i would say it really is the same as as learning any other service you just need to know the syllabus so you can check the certificate syllabus and see what topics you need to cover and what you need to know to pass the certificate and then start studying those topics as if you're uh, yeah, trying to get hands-on experience with them. Just do the same things, go to a training, uh, follow a course, maybe read a book on some of the topics. Uh, yeah. And that will really help you prepare well for, uh, for the certification. Yeah. The way, the way Leon, you talk about the balance between skill and uh, sort of studying experience makes me think of fresh college graduates too, you know, if you're hiring someone directly out of college, even if they're from a good school, um, you know they read the books, but you don't know if you're ready to hire them yet. Um, and I think what's unique about the cloud industry is that there's no schools, really, traditional colleges that really teach you how to use a cloud provider, right? Like maybe you can learn about cloud computing at a school, but you can't learn about you know, the products different cloud companies offer that much. Um, so you're really, when, when you're looking for that certification, you can't rely on a Yale cloud computing degree, right? You kind of want to see the company that you're using, you know, uh, you want to see your employees certified in that company that you're using in your company. So it kind of sort of adds up, right? So there is no other thing right now besides certifications to say that you are learning these things, right? Yeah. But you're, you're totally right, Leon. You don't want to hire someone straight out of college to run your entire infrastructure, right? Yeah. You want someone who has done it before, um, but then has also the book knowledge proven by the certificates. Right. It is that yeah, sort it's of the same. It's the same for computer science in general or, or a study like that. 
uh, like studying computer science for three or four years doesn't necessarily mean that you're a skilled programmer. It just means right. that you know the concepts and that you've mm -hmm. studied the concepts, but then applying those takes a certain amount of yeah, maybe craftsmanship or a certain kind of experience that you need to get before you're going to be really effective. And I think that's how you need to see certifications. So I think we have, we've all seen the movies or the TV series in which there's someone just graduating and then hoping to get at a really fancy company. And the first thing they do is actually say, okay, now throw out everything you learned and now we're going to start fresh. And that's yeah. a bit the same with how cloud goes is you've, you have the certificate. So now forget everything you learned there. And now we're going to do the real thing because there are also some topics in the certificates that are just not used that often uh, on a daily basis in practice. Um, and the certificates might suggest that they are, but in practice they're not. So it's really good to also know that balance and know that difference. And that's what you, yeah, you can only get uh, with experience. In addition to that, um, I, I wanted to add that the cloud providers, in this case, Alibaba Cloud, they are developing their own platform so fast and they are adding so fast also uh, new services, new solutions, that sometimes it's kind of uh, difficult to know about the, all of them, to have an overview. And I'm using the uh, certifications basically also for that. Basically, uh, many services which I have never worked with uh, at least having the basic knowledge or the knowing the fundamentals of, of that uh, service uh, is helping me to keep myself up to date, so to say, because uh, the, the good thing of the certifications is that they cover a lot of services. Mostly you will never use it, but it's very important to know that they are there and that you get that uh, fundamentals or that basics. Uh, in addition uh, to that, um, I think for fresh graduates uh, who have a certification, I think they they will uh, the the eyes of company will will be on them after that after uh, filter uh, they will uh, challenge the the new the fresh graduates to to do some tasks like uh, to prove. Is it uh, is it true that you already passed this this exam? As a sample, you certified a Kubernetes administrator, and you you got challenged to do a maker microservice, and then I think I think it will prove too. <laughs> but not also fresh students, but also experienced uh, employees. In Everybody needs to be proved in order to, to show uh, what experiences and, and where you, you, you are uh, most up to date or basically where you are good. I think uh, that's important for everyone. It's cool when education institutes that provide certificates are also pushing um, students to have those experiences before they are certified. Um, and I think, you know, things like lab environments or things like setting up projects that you need to complete um, before earning a certification uh, could probably put employers a little bit more at ease saying, okay, yes, it is a certification, but part of that certification was this project or this practical thing that this student actually did. Um, and I think, you know, we can do a better job at Alibaba Cloud Academy providing uh, providing that experience to give more confidence to employers and then raising the value of these certifications. Yeah, it's just it's just not something you can really cover in multiple choice questions. Like it's right, can, totally. No, I agree. I agree. It's not adding multiple choice questions. It's 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 something a little bit more, yes. <laughs> is, is this configuration snippet correct or not? Then yeah, uh, okay. But there's context that, you, that you're that you missing. Like it, it might be correct in certain situations, but it's not correct in other situations. So is it right, a right, yes right. or no? And then, yeah. Right, that, right, right. Yeah. I think uh, certif like certification institutes like Alibaba Cloud, but also others uh, can really uh, yeah add, add value to the certificate if they would be able to add that practical part as well. Yeah, yeah. It's difficult because you usually have to go user by user if you really want to evaluate them properly, yeah. you know, um, to really give the feedback necessary for them to grow. Um, so there's still there's still sort of a a, a labor sort of question there is who's who's actually evaluating these thousands of users every day. You know? 
um, that that's sort of difficult, but maybe we could all make that, but that would be kind of difficult too. It's something to think about. <laughs> um, okay, so we have we have a couple of cloud cloud computing enthusiasts here. Um, so I'm sure you guys have dreams about where we're going with all this stuff. I'm sort of curious about uh, wh where you think we're going to be. Maybe next year when we have this panel discussion, maybe five years down the line when we have this panel discussion, what are we going to be talking about then? What are the issues that we're going to be having? Because it's not all just golden and good and we're going to be better and better. You know, I think we're going to come up with new issues that we're going to have to solve. And what role will Alibaba Cloud play in all of that um, on the world stage and in your regions? Yeah. I for me, the biggest hope is that more standardization will actually happen because we've mm. seen multiple cloud providers trying to sort of isolate themselves from the others um, and, and yeah, just taking a bigger market, which is understandable. But I do think that really to have a fair competition and to really make sure that customers and users can get the best out of cloud, it will be really good to see more standardization happening, especially in the serverless area. Because if you currently run a serverless application on uh, cloud provider A and you want to move it to cloud provider B, then you, you're almost, you, you often have to replatform the whole thing. You have to restructure yeah. your code. You have to restructure the whole architecture because the services are yeah. different. But mm -hmm. there are some uh, initiatives to, to, to start using like a standardization, uh, uh, standardization methods to make this more transferable from cloud provider A to B. Um, for example, we had things like Knative and now you have something like the open application model, but it's all running on Kubernetes, which is not completely serverless. Um, so I would say if we can get the full function compute and services like that standardized, we can get a better like market competition and it will be easier to run your application with the best serverless service from uh, cloud provider A paired up with the serverless service of uh, cloud provider B because they're standard and you can just mix and match them and choose the best solution for your problem. Um, and I, I think currently there are lots of uh, dangers of getting locked into a, a cloud provider. And I'm hoping that cloud providers also realize that it might be good uh, for the competition and for the market to actually enable people to choose more wisely based on costs, based on performance, based on regions, uh, based on networking capabilities, based on, um, for example, the Chinese market. So if you want to go to China, then you're probably better off using a Chinese cloud provider. Uh, but if you're already using a, an American one, then you're going to have a tr have some trouble. Um, so if more standardization happens, then yeah, we get more choice, a bigger bigger market, I would say, a better, more healthy market. So I'm really hoping that cloud providers will play a role there, and thereby also make multi-cloud a more widespread uh, concept. So you can just yeah start mixing mixing and matching. And I think Alibaba Cloud will uh, internationally start gaining more traction. Uh, we see Alibaba Cloud showing up more in all kinds of comparisons, uh, Gartner and all, all those kinds of quadrants. Um, Alibaba Cloud is showing up. So there's more, uh, the, the name is more known, which means that uh, companies and, and, and developers and cloud engineers will start looking into Alibaba Cloud and getting interested for it. But thereby, they also get the responsibility to uh, make sure that the market is steered in the right direction. So I'm hoping that's going to be in the direction of yeah, cross-cloud standardization. Uh, that, that's my hope. But that's for the coming five years because this is not something that will happen next year, I guess. Nice. Yeah, that's actually a good point. And something what I wanted to highlight was basically that I also hope that, but it's going to be a long way. It's going to be, I think it's more complex than we think. And it, because there's a lot of political stuff inside and it's going to take long, but it would be for me, that would be a dream to be able to choose the best service and not uh, the best provider. I mean, uh, that standardization would be really amazing. On the other side, uh, I, I have also seen in, in Europe the, the, that Alibaba Cloud is increasing uh, a lot, uh, not only the adoption, but also the, the people has more interested on it. The people wants to know more about that. How does it work? What are the certifications? Uh, what are the services? Which kind of innovation do they have? I see that there is a, the, the direction is, is increasing a lot. And I hope that this continue like this uh, because the, I think it's, it's also important to, to have a new player in the market. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, this, this will be like this. 
Yeah, um, in five years, um, I believe that many products will uh, will answer the the problems and give solution for them, and um, they will combine their their uh, their solution with technology, and in this position, I believe that Alibaba Cloud uh, should uh, should add new feature and upgrade their uh, version of maybe uh, their their feature so that uh, users or market still fit with with the with the uh, service from Alibaba and use them to solve their uh, their uh, problems issue with uh, Alibaba technologies i think that's from Okay. Um, that was kind of all my questions. Do you guys have anything you'd like to say to the Alibaba Cloud Summit? Well, I could add maybe that the, the job what uh, Alibaba Cloud Academy is doing with all the um, trainings, courses, um, materials that they, they are creating uh, it's amazing uh, because I know how difficult it is to create a course. I know how um, difficult it is to engage new customers or new persons in order to uh, yeah, get into those courses. And uh, I, I, in my opinion, uh, Alibaba Cloud is doing there a lot of a great job in education, in um, yeah, basically in, in growing also the community, not just uh, with the uh, with the academy, but also with the events that they are creating, uh, the community is very important in order to share information out there uh, and uh, be able to, I don't know, to to develop um, solutions uh, because there are always questions, always uh, solutions that can, uh, I mean, that can solve your problems. And if there is a huge community be behind that, uh, that makes the 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 in this case, Alibaba Cloud, um, very important uh, online. Yeah, I think uh, we need to keep just keep on building that community uh, because I completely agree. Community is maybe the most important thing. And that's also what drives either like uh, being a big success or being a uh, staying like uh, or, or, or just getting out of the market completely. And that all depends on community. And it's the same for uh, for tools that you use, but also for cloud providers. If there's a big community and you can get the help you need, if people are there to assist, either like official people from Alibaba Cloud or maybe one of the MVPs, uh, you can just contact us and then we can maybe answer your question. Um, if there's a community, then people can keep on studying and keep on improving. And uh, together we can, we can make it uh, an even bigger success and continue doing that. So... I really hope that uh, everyone agrees that events like this are actually really helpful. And also, uh, yeah, just staying in touch with each other and finding each other to support uh, others in solving their problems. Uh, I think that is really something that we need to keep on doing. Um, so yeah, I want to, uh, want to really uh, say that explicitly and thank everyone for the community building so far. And I'm looking forward to build an even bigger community. Great. Yeah. Yes, as we work with human, uh, as we work with computers all day, it turns out the humans are the most valuable resource, right? Yeah, correct. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I have no doubt about that uh, because uh, we know that the most important things is community, and uh, community will help the maybe Alibaba Cloud to uh, uh, maybe reach a larger scale and uh, help more people in company maybe if they if they uh, want any any support just ask us and yeah i think that's that's uh, really important to have community Great, great. Well, I think that's a great note to end it on. Um, for all of you out there watching, um, we are trying to grow this community. Um, and you can see three uh, three guys here, Boy, Pablo, and Leon, that are here to answer um, questions. I'm sure if you send any of them private messages, they'd be very happy to talk to you, uh, as well as me. Um, I'm here at Alibaba Cloud. 
Um, and uh, we are looking to grow uh, this community and um, create leaders um, among Alibaba Cloud through development. So we're really happy that, I'm really happy that that was sort of the way that we could end this panel um, by, by growing our community. Um, so thank you everyone for watching. Um, thank you, Boy Pablo and Leon for participating. Um, and thank you for watching the Alibaba Cloud Summit Live 2021, everyone. And we will see you next year. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you.